damn good service and something that's very, very useful. Uh, both of us were very, very impressed impressed at the crystal clarity of the sound. Um, and the other thing it allows you to do as well is I can create a, what's called a hangout. And I hate using these buzzwords, but basically a, a group webcam chat is what it is, uh, which also appears to be very good as well. And I think the uh, Linux Outlaws have been uh, experimenting with a few ideas around that and their show. So it's looking very good at the moment. Hopefully there won't be any hidden nasty surprises within its service. But staying on the subject of social networking for a second, we're going to look at this uh, diaspora as well, which I mentioned before, I've got an invite to, and that's a another service which, uh, again, is a fantastic uh, service. You're, it's unlike Google. This isn't coming from a, a bit of a corporation. This is built on the ethos of you, ethos of you looking after or having ownership of your own data, and it works pretty much the same way as Google Plus does, uh, minus a few of the more advanced features that Google Plus is counting. It has what's called aspects, which is in this Google Plus groups. And it should be noted that Diaspora had this idea of grouping prior to Google Plus. Um, well, I'm again, pretty I'm, sure if you look around at prior uh, examples of implementation of these networks, even prior to Facebook, uh, you did have things very similar. I'm not sure why Facebook oh. grew so fast. And I have my own explanation as to why this happened. Not also, Google has so. the, yeah, well, Google has this major major advantage of having loads of control over email. Uh, this is the reason they know your friends' email addresses and can contact them. Uh, the reason they have the chat components is because this is basically part of the so-called cloud uh, of Google. They also have this thing, I'm not sure you've ever seen that, it's called Google Profiles. And I believe this is what they'll have for Usenet at some stage for what they call Google Groups. Well, Google Groups is a combination of what they create themselves, which they could call kind of Google's own groups or Google setup uh, groups, Google induced groups. Uh, but it's mostly Usenet, at least the very occupied channels. Um, and Google is basically trying to shift everything to this combination of different components. Uh, including an operating system, including a browser. Now they have a browser, they have a video site, a video sharing site. Um, they have all kinds of stuff. And they use the, uh, even, even Buzz, even the what used to be called Buzz, and perhaps to a certain extent uh, Wave, they could actually use some components from Wave uh, okay. to make a composition of things and create a very rich experience where you open a presentation, you open a document by just opening a new tab and it goes into Google Apps and uh, you open a video by just playing some YouTube thing and then you share it with friends and they can rank it and whatever. You know, Microsoft couldn't possibly dream of such things and Apple is very, very far behind. They have this thing called iCloud, which I, I just think it's some cloud, another cloud service just with the trademark i that, you know, Apple yeah. likes to brag about. Uh, so some people will, you know, some people will instantaneously subscribe to it because it's something to do with Apple and they can, you know, they can project their membership of the Apple uh, culture. Uh, but one of the things with uh, Google is going to grow very fast in this space, I believe. And I think they got things right this time because they use a very viral type of campaign to send mails to people and invite people. I believe in the first week they gained something like 10 million members, which is it's, an amazing it, number if you consider exponential growth, it's probably going to be 100 million quite quite soon. I mean, I, I would expect you'd have to put a large proportion of those down to curiosity and uh, a novelty factor, because it's a new service, it's by a, a company that's very large, very well known. So of course there's going to be a massive interest. Whether it manages to sustain that interest over Facebook will, I think, be very dependent on whether they can get the Facebook Uses yeah. that currently well, uh, the, uh, over themselves, um, the, uh... which which is why I think the Aspera is such a good service. Um, the reason why I think it is is because over the conversations I've had over the past four or five days, it seems to me that the Diaspora community is actually, <laughs> dare I say, it, rather more genuine. Um, I would compare it. To the difference between Diaspora and, say, not maybe not Google Plus at the moment, but Diaspora is to Facebook what Identica is to Twitter. Identica, you get a lot of silliness going on, you get a lot of companies pushing their wares, you get a lot of dubious characters 
promoting certain things in certain ways. Whereas Identica seems to be very relevant, very on topic, very friendly. And you go into Identica and you can have conversations about the subjects you're interested in without being sidetracked by get yourself a free iPod by signing up on this online form here. Um, and that's what I'm seeing on Diaspora. It seems to be very focused on people who are actually interested in what they say they're interested in. You have keywords for your profile there. Um, it's got a set of pre-built in. Yeah. Uh, that's because every it's small, you know. Yeah. Once and it's it, it, big, you have all, even if it has the potential to become big, then you have all the uh, so-called SEO companies and all the... Uh, actually, there was an incident recently. Uh, one US politician was caught basically buying through a PR agency something like 90% of his so-called followers in Twitter. Uh, and mm-hmm. lots of people... Actually, I, I knew a person who was running a person from the gym that I know. And he was telling me, oh, I'm going to have more friends. And I say, how come? And he say, oh, I just I just bought some. <laughs> and this is... Uh, yeah, yeah. This yeah. Into a whole business. And this is the reason that you load this account. And the same thing happens in Facebook, by the way. So you couldn't possibly... Just blame Google for these things. Lo- loads of the accounts, they try to do a cleanup now, and they know what they do a cleanup. You would think that they want as many members as possible, but you'd be surprised. I mean, so people mm-hmm. start to get is get your free iPod, as you mentioned, all kinds of uh, users with really curious names, and they start getting mm-hmm. spam, and they start having people even troll them. Uh, that's just diluting the whole experience in the mm-hmm. service. Uh, the same issue was experienced in uh, Netscape, which then became Propeller. I mean, there was so much spam, and nobody even wanted to delete the spam because it was so much trouble, because they were taking over the entire website. And at some stage, the whole website was, like, cancelled and thrown away because it was just so full of spam. Uh, so they can completely destroy a service if they wish to. Well, before we go on to the first uh, music break which hopefully Roy's got a track for us I just want to make a very brief note about something on Google Plus which has been talked about a bit and has been conflicting news and it's the whole issue of usernames and using real names uh, real names and first names as, as your username on Google Plus now originally it was insisted by Google that you did so and you couldn't have any fake names my original one was Goblin Open Bites, which of course uh, didn't meet with the approval of Google and then but during this time there was a, a few conflicting reports saying that they were going to withdraw from this idea and you could use whatever username you like and ultimately what transpired was I got an email from uh, from Google to say well I got a message on my Google Plus profile to say that my account being suspended because they didn't believe my my name which to be fair Goblin Open Bites isn't a particularly likely name that a person would have so then it made me, it pushed me into a bit of a corner because obviously I wanted to use a Google Plus uh, service, but I didn't like the idea of being forced to reveal my identity. Uh, I think I should be allowed some privacy if I want. I understand that they've got my email address, they can read my pluses or whatever you want to call the, the postings on Google Plus and use that for marketing techniques and marketing uh, if they wish. And that's fine with me. I enter into that contract in inverted commas with that full knowledge. But when it comes to privacy, a bit of privacy, I've, uh, I would like to retain some of that. So anyway, keep Google happy. Obviously, they had my first name already, which people do know, Tim. And I gave them a surname. And so now they appear to have approved the surname. It was a really outstanding surname. And it's now up to them to approve or disprove whether it's my real name or not. But uh, Suffice to say, I'm back on Google Plus, and until I hear otherwise, my account's all there. Which does make me wonder, though, as to all the celebrities that might be wanting to come on Google Plus. I presume that Lady Gaga won't be allowed on Google Plus. Elton John won't be allowed on uh, Google Plus. Um, Angelina Jolie, I believe that's her real name, so she won't be allowed on it either. And I fail to see really how a real sounding name can be any more uh, protective of this of the community than a, a fake name like Goblin Open by. So if I wanted to, I could call myself John Smith and go on there and troll everybody on I if I wanted they, to, or I could do it. But the uh, market element of things, I think that they have no very simple way of knowing it. Be. Do you know if they use dictionaries and list of names and something to actually try and scan for suspect accounts so I, that they can clean things up? I've got no idea. Um, all I know is that... They do the have first... an invite-based system, but I suppose it's well, sufficient, though. I, I, for the first three days, three or four days, it was not an issue. 
And then all of a sudden I got a message. In fact, he didn't actually tell me I was suspended because I could still read the stream. It was when I tried to post or go to my profile. There's a little red message that said, uh, your account has been suspended uh, and it had to fill in a form, which was all well and good, but the form, online form, didn't actually work and it redirected me to some page listing of uh, different languages and was claiming I wanted to access the form in a language they didn't support, which was strange because I speak English. But 